the first topic for this session is Hive, a petabyte scale data warehouse using Hadoop. Uh, Hive is an open source data warehousing framework based on Hadoop, which was developed by the in data infrastructure team of Facebook. Uh, we have Saad Patel, uh, Akka, uh, Ashish Tusko, and uh, Varun Bansal, aka Jaydeep, Jaydeep, uh, from the team. Uh, Saad completed his undergraduation from the Rutgers CS department and is now pursuing his master's in computer science at Rutgers as well. In his free time, he likes to code and is also a uh, ping pong enthusiast. Uh, Varun is a graduate student in the Rutgers CS department. Prior coming to the US for his master's, he worked for two years as a software engineer for M3 Software. He likes to read blogs. Uh, he is a chocolate lover and also craves for chicken. So save your hands because Varun is here. <laughs> That it's open source, so like um, anyone can uh, fix it, and like any problems happen. Okay. So the first point is the problem at Facebook that we had was there was a lot of data, a lot of data. User clicks this, he updates the status, he does this, um, and only the problem was we were, we were first we started with MySQL, and we had like um, a few terabytes of data. The problem is that uh, it didn't scale well, so we started using MapReduce. The problem with MapReduce was that only the development team who, like, who specialized in code, they can only uh, see this data, and like everyone else, they, they only relied on them. So what? So that's the that's the main problem. So like we have a lot of data, and only like specific people can use it, and we have we like you could see like we have so much data like 300 terabytes and it's growing it, it grows because um, every day you have um, a lot of data so hive in a few words basically you you know the sql language and basically um, you know the sql language and you want um, high scalability and um, basically you have all that with MapReduce, but you want easiness with SQL. So that's where um, Hive comes in. So if you're a company and you want to like, um, you have like MapReduce already set up, or um, you have SQL database already set up, and you want to transfer to, um, and you want the easiness of SQL, so like the business department and the financial department, they all use SQL, and you just want to transfer it, Hive would be the best option for you. So let's go through a few points um, of Hive. The first thing is that it's ideal for data warehousing. Um, we have a lot of data and um, we need to use it somehow and we need everyone, uh, we need everyone to use it. So this, um, this is going to be the best option. Now the main point about Hive is that it uses only structured data. So um, it can use also semi-structured data, it depends on how you parse it. So um, usually it's like CSV file, which is like you have a columns and then you have a data separated by um, a separator. That's the main thing. Ad hoc query is it's just like an interface over MapReduce. So um, basically, Hive internally translates the jobs to MapReduce, and that's where like um, the flexibility comes in. So Sal, let me ask you a question. So we're not just talking about uh, Cassandra, right? Yes. That's Facebook too. Yes. So what? Why do you need Hive when you have Cassandra? Ah, uh, this is a Yes, it's okay. Uh, do they answer the way? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you. I mean, the thing is, this is not like real time. This you is like you don't like those guys? These are two different teams? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is like, this is for analytical data. That's for probably real time data. So uh, ah, like this, right. this brings us to what uh, these guys first presented. That databases and MapReduce. MapReduce is good for analytical things. And the database orthodox ones are good for uh, storing things. And uh, mine is not even that, by the way. Yeah, so like the reason so here wanted, right, because Hive is only used in the analytics infrastructure, not the transactional yeah, so infrastructure. Like the only transactional it's only used in like internal Facebook. We don't use it outside Facebook because our users need to query. As he said, right, MapReduce needs lots of code to be written. Right. So what Hive does is, you write a query language, just like a SQL, it will convert to a MapReduce job. Yeah, we'll give a very good example. So that's the main purpose of Hive. So now, you can't use, the main reason you can't use SQL is because of the large data sets. It's um, too large for SQL to handle. And yeah, it translates to MapReduce jobs. So let's look at an example where we log the user's clicks, like for example on Facebook or Amazon. The first thing we have is like we have a file on the server clicks.log, right? 
the thing it has is uh, it has the um, date, the timestamp, and all this information. So first, the first information is the timestamp, and then we have the server, which server it runs on. This metadata we could we could store infinitely many data; it doesn't matter. The main part is when we transform the data, because this is like the extract, transform, and load process, like which um, um, the pre, uh, Tanuj um, you went over. Yes, yeah, you went over. Right. So um, you have a lot of metadata: process ID, which type of process ran it, what's the process ID, and then you have the user ID. You have the user ID, and you have like the term, right? So what you want to do is transform this data into a thing that hive to read. It's like for example, here, right? We transform the data. We rename the file. If you go to the next slide, I'll go into it. So what did we do here? We removed the month and the date. We renamed the file to the date. We added a separator comma. It could be anything, as long as I can read it. You separate the process name, process ID. It's like very flexible. You you have, you could um, provide your own parser, or you could, um, or they have already a parser built in, which is very flexible. And, and then and then we separate the action and the term. So like the user search for aliens on Earth. That's the first step. Extract the data from the file system and transform it to a way that I can read. Then what do we do? We load this data. So um, this is like a command which just um, puts the, the data we just created into the uh, Hadoop file system which Hive uses. Anyone have any questions after that? Okay, so so the next thing we do is create a table. Now this table has all the information um, about the table, and the thing, the main thing is here we partition by this date. Now partitioning we could do by anything, but usually the most logical thing is to partition things by like you should uh, like is what it physically does is creates directories for each partition. So this is like the most u uh, useful way to partition the data. Like you wouldn't partition based on like. Um, the term or something like that. It wouldn't make sense. So is this like group by by year, month, and day? Or? No, like it's physically located. Like for example, mm -hmm. you see the file we created. Go back. Yeah, you see this file we created. Mm -hmm. That has a specific date, right? So in the disk physically is gonna be in a folder, which is uh, the year, like right here, the year, the month, and the date. So it physically, that's how physically separated. Because usually you don't want to operate on the whole data set. You just want to operate on like this month or this day or this year. So, so that is basically just like group by, group by year and month and day. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, you could say that. But it's not, like, it's not like a query, it's like how it's physically stored in the disk. Okay, so yeah, how the data is physically separated. So now what do we do? Um, for our example, we load the data in, we create a partition, um, 2015. Um, January and the 9th, and we should just tell the location which we previously loaded the file here, which is a directory in a uh, Hadoop file system. Next, what do we do? Now we're done. Now anyone can analyze from any department. Um, for example, here, look, uh, what we're we doing here, I, I mean, everyone should, they should be familiar, right? We just um, select the time, the user ID, and the message where the term is aliens, like aliens. So we could get this user searches for this, this user adds to the cart, this user downloads this, anything like that. Now, um, uh, the, now you're, you're, you're probably thinking like, what is this map reduce crunching? Like, um, we're going to go over in the second part. Okay, can you go back? Okay. Yeah, um, so, yeah, so here, like, what you what do you do here? You have a user ID, and you just want to find all this, um, everything that the user clicked in January of 2015. Now here is a little bit more exa uh, advanced example. You find all the things that the user searched in 2015, uh, January 2015. So what do we do? The syntax here is like insert, overwrite table, creates a new table. So the syntax is first you do a from, and you select the data. You select the data you want to operate on. So here you're selecting the search terms for, uh, for the uh, year. This is not uh, for right. It's for based on the Google Docs, So, so, okay, so what's new here? Like, what's why is new? What's new? The thing is new is, you, you have a, uh, you select the first data, 
and you create you could create new tables out of it. That's like the main point of uh, the, the main. Well, I can do it. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just it's just it's just in memory. You can do it. Insert into it. Right. You can do insert uh, yeah. SQL into a table. Yeah. Right? yeah. So now it's just different. Uh, well, it's just, just based based of using map because the, the, the same usually thing. usually in like um, I write, you just want tables. You don't want like um, uh, specific values. You just want tables of, and mm -hmm. analyze the tables. But but I can also do views in SQL. You can create views. Yeah, yeah. This, cannot this use MapReduce. We are we are trying to build a system over MapReduce, and uh, you can supply SQL. You could say that this is like um, a materialized view. That's what you could say it is. Yes. It's materialized on the disk. Okay. Um, here, you, you're. Um, so you just. I'm just giving examples. For example, what you could do with this. So here, you find all the terms. Whereas alien 2015, and you could find how many terms. Um, um, alien by month, basically, uh, how many times the term appeared every month. Everyone, anyone have any questions? So where does map? Uh, so where does map reduce enter here? You know. So you have a syntax, right? I mean, yeah. it's a little bit different than. Uh, yeah, you know, what we have SQL, okay, fine, but I mean, we, I can do it with SQL. Yeah. So where does MapReduce enter the picture here? Well, what MapReduce does is basically translate all this into MapReduce jobs. Mm. Um, you you run the go okay. right? So here, this, we could even do advanced stuff like this, which is like find the trending terms for the January 2015. So basically, first what you do is you select everything for the month 2015 January. And then what you do, you select the term here, you split it. Uh, what split does is basically, if you have a term separated by space, right? You could split it so that it's like an array now. So it's like um, uh, aliens, and then there's a, that's an, an, another array element is on, another element is earth. Then what explode does is basically, it just transposes it. So now you have it as a column. And you just group by that. So like it's very flexible. You could look, do a lot of things here. Can you go over this once again? Okay. So what do you do first? First, uh, you understand this one, the subquery. Yeah. You select everything. Okay. Now you want to create a table trending terms, right? Now using this table, you have this. You, you first want to do this one, right? From. So you, you have this uh, January 2015. Let me give you an example. For so if you have a string like this, right? Right. What split does is basically um, it uh, separates this into an array, right? So like um, it's like uh, you could have complex data type. It's not only limited to like um, uh, the strings and the integers. You could have arrays, maps, all this in like uh, columns. So what you do first, you split the data like this. Then what explode does is basically it does like this: aliens, and then you have on, and then you have birth. So basically, you have all the terms in every document like that. So it splits. So wait, wait. wait. So it's why do you explode, right? So I mean, that's, I mean that looks are, more like from, If you see in real life, these are like uh, programming languages terms. In PHP, like, like PHP. Yeah, right? PHP. You would use this, but right. like um, what um, uh, Hive does is basically using because it has complex types, it could use these functions. So how do you, I mean, how does it segregate as map and reduce if you say it's like, you know, it goes to map, as it translates as map reduce, so can't come over them. Because, yeah. like, um, it, translate, it doesn't translate into, like, one map reduce job. It translates into many jobs. Like, each one of these is probably, like, each one of these is probably one job. What do you want to split? Huh? Why do you want to split? So you want to know all the terms that, um, be that uh, January. You want to know, like, the most terms uh, in January, right? So basically now, here you have all the terms, every single term, right, in like a single column. And then you just group by the most terms, you can see the most terms. Yes. So like for example, you here you get like aliens, 100 times, right? So like, uh, what it does is, uh, basically, usually the developer is the one who only um, um, interacts with the map reduce. Basically what Hive does is basically, and at Facebook, we have like a um, two-hour, um, every new user goes to a two-hour um, review, um, and we, we just uh, teach him the Hive QL, and 
and because of that, uh, like if, if any department, he could use it. Sales, marketing, maintenance, all of that. Okay. So I'll try to explain the uh, working of how Hive converts the data, uh, uh, the queries into MapReduce jobs. So let's take an example, and uh, the example is uh, we want to partition the data, um, group the data based, based on uh, gender or uh, school school name. So um, first we create a table status update from, uh, and we have a bucket in which we have uh, status updates from all the users. And next we get another table called profiles. So uh, we have all the profiles in a bucket. So um, and we select uh, user ID, gender, school, uh, because that's what we want to query on. So um, first we do select, uh, first we do the join on status update table and the profiles table based on user ID and where date is equal to uh, this thing. Uh, the next is uh, we want to group by gender or uh, group by school. Yes, that's how it works. So the select thing, uh, first we uh, filter the status updates using the date and uh, selects the profiles, profiles table, and uh, that part is done in the map thing. So and, uh, the next thing is we join them. We join them using the reduce. Uh, so uh, the, the how uh, this is done is using the compiler, which uh, which is like a standard compiler, which takes a, which has parser, um, um, uh, query optimizer, and um, logical query. Uh, query analyzer and physical query generator. That's how uh, that's it, uh, how it translates into MapReduce jobs. So, anyone have any questions about this? Anyone does understand? Well, I mean, the, the interesting part is the, like we had before, right? The map reduces coding, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like you code. see here. Here you're like, saying basically. Yeah, here you, 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 you it's so simple. Out. You just like you have a, you have two tables, right? You just filter the date, and basically you join them. And so, is this done like operation by operation? In other words, join is kind of, you know, reduced to map, translated into a reduced job, and then uh, it's kind of a uh, recursive. I mean, like, it, it, whenever they could do parallel, they, we use parallel. So, like, for example, if you, if you go on the next slide, right, you see, like, at first we get the um, subquery, right? Using the subquery, we could create two tables, right? We select two tables, we filter uh, here, um, then we could run these two in parallel. Because now we have the data for gender and the school from the school summary table, and uh, we can we have uh, like uh, male one, male two. Male so three. if I gave you my favorite uh, bar beer drinker query, <laughs> and keep coming back to this, right? There is no end. Uh, give me. Well, you, you know, give me all drinkers who only frequent bars who sell beer as they like. If I give you this query, can you do MapReduce version of this? If you can write a SQL query for that. Yeah. Well, yeah, we all know, right, by now. And I assume that the regular SQL yeah, we can, we can do that. Yeah. We can do that by loading the data based on, but you have to give us, uh, on most basis, uh, you want to partition the data. Let's say. Uh, you want to partition based on the PF bar, uh, how many beers that bar serves. So we're going to partition the data on based on the bar, and uh, and um, on that partition we'll run that query. But you could you could run any job, like right? yes. it doesn't matter. It just turns it to MapReduce, selects it, and then it just. Um, so I have a question, like in uh, usual relational databases. Uh, you have like query optimizer, so it does some cost estimation of you know what will be the cost of this query part. So when you give a job to this guy, does it first perform some query optimization uh, and say that probably this is not the best job to be done on MapReduce? Is there some module in it, or whatever you say, it will always go ahead and do it? I mean, it. because there is no. I mean, you're saying like. Uh, does it? Is there some module which does that, or is it always going to read the? I mean, it's an SQL query. Like, if you have a, um, if if you're on an SQL query, is, it, is the compiler going to say, oh no, that's not a good job for SQL? No, no. Um, I mean, that's what my point is. Does the compiler decide that this is can be done within the RDBA? I, I mean, any any query can be done as long as you could write it. 
and it's always going to do it the map reducing even if the yeah. very thought is going to translate from map this is very particular to the application of facebook so it will do it yeah. all in the map reducing like we, we, don't usually, have we usually for use it for um, analytics and we usually use group by stuff but like if you want to do complex queries you you free to do it uh, it's going to be slow but um, Right, it depends it's on I guess. It depends on the speed of map yeah. In some cases, it's not going to be right. Yes, yeah. Yeah. but all, all the limitations of map reduce are going to come here because ultimately we are doing running the jobs and map reduce. Yeah. So uh, I noticed that since the SQL uh, query there has some uh, partition. So I was wondering for different partitions stored different uh, on different server, right? No, or on the like same system. System. So Hadoop file system is like a distributed file system, right? Oh, okay. So it's like Hadoop file system. Hadoop file system. Hadoop file system. Hadoop. Okay. You guys can get that up and up because we only have 20 minutes right. left. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm wrong. Wrong. Yeah. Alright. Um, yeah. So, um, so that's that's yeah. how we uh, how we translate. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is one point. I'm not sure whether the paper covered this, but it has some aggregate functions, right? So it doesn't have like uh, non-distributable aggregate functions. What do you mean? I mean, like we just discussed, right? Uh, things like average and all cannot be put into map reduce. Like you can't distribute mean and standard. I mean, it's just yeah. a. Again, uh, um, all the limitations of map reduce are going to be there. Yeah, any limitation of map reduce is uh, basically there. Okay, uh, so uh, that was that that is the thing how we um, translate uh, SQL query into a map reduce job. Next is uh, many of the cli our, our clients are using uh, Hive. And uh, you cannot just translate, re uh, just copy the SQL query and run it over the Hive because uh, the the Hive is in the uh, development phase. It's still new. So let's say you have this query. It's 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 a legit query in a SQL, but uh, uh, because of uh, uh, and uh, the user didn't use on with the join. That's why uh, he he wasted uh, one plus day a lot of resources running that query. Like um, here, like I suppose this is like a billion rows, and this is like another billion rows. Like in SQL, um, um, SQL you only limited by memory. But here, like the thing, uh, the, the reason you can't run this is because um, it's like run on um, hundreds of computers, and like all of them are gonna run your job, and you're gonna be wasting time, and it's, it doesn't even make sense. So, so it would run still. It would run right because like one of our clients, one of our clients ran this uh, ran this period, right? It ran, it ran until for 20 hours. Then after that, it just failed because you, you, I mean, it doesn't make sense to run this like a billion by a billion. It's gonna be too much work to handle. Okay, so that's again a limitation of uh, map reduce more than hive because. Uh, it, it should be used for analytical querying, and uh, Hive is not good for uh, real-time querying because it will, it takes time to set up the whole cluster and everything. So that's why it shouldn't be used there. Uh, so <coughs> uh, uh, these are some points. That, for example, like if you want to com uh, compute uh, um, some query where you have to use uh, uh, values which are previously computed. Computed, so you cannot do that using it because uh, map and reduce jobs are run separately. So you cannot use the data which are computed in a uh, reduce job in the map job map uh, function. And that's very interesting, right? Because yeah. uh, essentially you can independently right. uh, distribute because uh, the n depends on n minus one, like yeah. hidden yeah. like Markov. Yeah, thing, right? Markov thing exactly. Online learning is a Markov simulation. Ah, I so see. Like that's that. You cannot okay. do that. Directly. Um, next is the conclusion. Um, it's not a real SQL database. It's not a database actually. It's just a wrapper over uh, MapReduce, which takes the data, uh, processes it, and gives you the output. That's it. It doesn't store the whole uh, table and everything. Uh, yeah, so it's not good for transactions. The bank transaction, as we discussed earlier, so it's not good for that. Uh, and uh, again, if you want uh, real quick answers, uh, I is not the thing for you because it's going to take time to set up the cluster, the map function, and the reduce function. And uh, as we see in the example, we need to be careful while uh, querying. The advantages are uh, uh, if you want, uh, if you have a system with, uh, where you uh, have data and you have SQL developers, uh, so you can uh, use Hive. Uh, in that system. And it's much more easier to learn yeah. if you want like any other application.
and um, right. it's easier than Java and all that. Yeah, but then you have to write a lot of code for accessing the data and everything. It's not like a rush, you guys, but that's it. Yeah.